Hey guys, this is Tony with Thinner Geek Designs, and today I'm back with another graphic design video. Today I wanted to talk to you about what are some great tips for a portfolio or building a portfolio so that you can show your clients or a job that you want to get and get that job. Remember, design videos come out Monday, so get subscribed for that if you haven't already. So let's go over some general portfolio advice before we dive into maybe some of the uh, categories of portfolios you could go into, like a logo or web design portfolio. Overall, in today's age, you need to have a digital portfolio. Whether that's a, a PDF document, an interactive PDF, um, a website, you need to have something that someone can look on their computer and see you. I would highly recommend a website since you can make it SEO or search engine optimized so that people can find you online and you won't have to do as much hunting for clients or jobs. Um, you want to make sure that it's something easy to use, people can see it, they can find it, or you can send it to them. The thing about print portfolios, I don't know how long print portfolios have left. They kind of have some value, they kind of don't. I mean, most jobs today, art directors or creative directors, are just asking you to send them one. They don't want to physically see it anymore. They probably have a stack of them already sitting that people have sent in and they haven't looked at in a while. So have a digital portfolio. If you want some free methods of building a digital portfolio, I would look at Wix. I would look at Square or yeah, Squarespace. I think has a free option. They might. Um, WordPress has a free option that you could build a portfolio website off of. Um, Behance, you could use a Behance website. Um, you could kind of use an Instagram. I wouldn't say an Instagram is a portfolio. I would mainly stick with Behance, WordPress, and Wix. Build a portfolio website. Build a free portfolio website. Get it out there. Get people finding you. Send it clients. Send it to potential jobs that you're looking for. And this will help get your foot in the door. I would also say some of your bigger projects that you have, like say if you have a full branding that's a logo, some packaging, some letterheads and envelopes and business cards, I would maybe take that, instead of just showing your work and saying, here's my work, isn't it good? Make it like a testimonial and make it uh, a full um, case study. Say what happened with this project? Why did the client need this? What were you providing? How would you provide it? What were the steps you took? Show some of your process work with it. Make it a full story versus just showing your work and saying, give me money. That doesn't work today. People aren't accepting that. Don't do that. If you do that, you're going to get short-term gains and then you're going to get axed. No one's going to want to work with you anymore. So overall, I would say some of your larger projects, make a case study out of them and put them in your portfolio. Say, here's all this work that went into this project and I hope you like it. This is all the stuff that went behind the scenes that you don't see at the final product. This will show people that you understand what goes into a project, what uh, you understand what the client needs are, you understand how to take the client needs and turn it into a final product and all the steps in between that. So look into that, make sure you have at least one of those. I would say have as many of those as you can. If you can turn every project or product, yeah, project, that you have in your portfolio into one of those, do it. It will make sure, it will help that a creative director or art director knows that they're making the right decision. It'll ensure that a client knows that you're making the, they're making the right decision by you by seeing that you understand client needs. There's an old saying in design school uh, when it comes to portfolios, and that is show the best 10 pieces of your work. They said this to me when I was in school. I didn't fully grasp it. I had way too many art pieces of work. Um, I don't believe in that saying. And I don't think it holds up today anymore. A client and an art director want to see a full body work, not just 10 pieces. How can you get yourself down to 10 pieces and say, this is my body of work. This is what I'm capable of. That's not going to fly. You need to show that you can do not only quality, but quantity. Maybe not all that work is done in one year, but maybe it's done over however many years you're in the industry. Say if you're in the industry, I don't know, like me, I'm in the industry for over five years. I'm going closer to 10 now. Um, you want to show that you have that body of work to show. If you only have 10 pieces of work and you've worked in the industry for 10 years, 
something's not right. You're missing something. There's there's a link that's not there that needs to be there. Um, I think you need to show as much work, but as much quality work as you can. You just don't want to show work just to show work. Then you're just wasting everyone's time. So maybe look at some other uh, portfolios. See how much work they're showing. I would say 10 is the minimum. Today, 10 is the minimum. Go as high as you want and as you feel that shows your true body work, your true ability as a designer. Also, if you don't have many clients or many previous work that you could add to this, um, I would think about looking at doing what's called a brainstorming session and making up a company and building up all this work for this company and putting it in your portfolio. Just when you go for an interview of a client or a customer, admit it. Don't lie and say it's a real company. That'll backfire on you one way or another. So admit that it's a fake company. Admit that it was a practice session. You're trying to get your foot in the door. Um, and just be honest. People will accept that you're learning and this is your way of learning. So don't be afraid of doing that as well. Now let's dive into some of the details about if you're doing a specific design portfolio. So say if you want to only do logos and only branding or if you only want to be a web designer. Let's get into those types of portfolios. Let's start with logos since everyone thinks they're a logo designer or they can just do a logo. Now when it comes to a logo design portfolio, I say you want to show as many logos as you can, but some of the bigger projects or the higher tier projects or the blue chip projects as a lot of uh, agencies like to call them, you want to make sure that you're showing your full work. Like I said earlier, you want to show a case study. But something note with a logo design versus a web design or something. You want to show comps. You want to show your process. You want to show the logo in black and white and color. Logos do not always work in color. That's why you design them in black and white first, then go color. You want to show both of those. You want to show it being used in multiple applications. This does not mean Photoshop mock-ups of it on a sign that no one uses that I've seen everywhere. You want it to show on a letterhead, if you did it on a letterhead, a business card, if done on a business card, etc, etc. So that you can show that you know that this logo translates to multiple mediums and multiple sizes. You have to keep that in mind. Make it a logo, has to work on the size of a business card, all the way to the size of a billboard or bigger. So keep that in mind. Now let's talk about if you're doing a web design specific portfolio. First thing, if you're doing a web design portfolio and you do a print portfolio, throw that thing out and stop calling yourself a web designer. Why are you trying to put a digital format on a printed product? Your people, the people who are hiring you, your client, your creative director, your art director, they need to see that you can actually do a digital product on a digital platform. So if you're doing a UI design, UX design, web design, mobile development, mobile app design, you need to make sure that it's on a digital platform that they can view. So that means a digital only website if you're doing web design. On top of that, you need to also show your process work on some of your bigger projects. Like I said on the previous one and the previous thing before that, you need to show your process work. People want to see it. This means wireframes. This means uh, why you chose the colors you did and uh, why you chose the layout you did. You want to show it work on multiple screens because if you're not making a website that's responsive today, you're doing it wrong and you shouldn't be doing that. All websites in 2018 should be responsive, period. End of story, at minimum adaptive, but responsive, period. So a web design portfolio needs to be digital, needs to show multiple screen sizes, need to show your work, wireframes, etc., layouts, different pages on your website, and also have a link to this product or this project. So if it was a, a project that you made up that you don't think, or you thought up a company, that's okay, slap it in and either upload it to your personal server or um, Business Catalyst allows you to do free websites sometimes. So make sure that you have that as an option. Well guys, I hope you learned something about uh, some portfolio tips and some portfolio advice on a portfolio for a graphic or web designer. If you have any questions or if I didn't explain anything as well, just leave a comment down below and I'll get down there with you and uh, help you out. Remember design videos come out Mondays, so get subscribed for that if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next one.
拜。